all, and welcome to this student meet and greet. We're grateful to have you along, happy to um, welcome you. And this is a great opportunity for you to hear from actual students about what life looks like at MST in Eastern College, Australia. My name is Sue Kimber. I am privileged to serve as the community life coordinator for the college, which means I have everything to do with students and student life, um, whether that's helping provide pastoral care, one-on-one uh, -on -one chatting with students, um, I kind of do a little bit of everything, but I do love my students and I'm happy to share them with you today. One of my privileges too is that I work with the student leadership team and we have three of our student, uh, four of our student leaders here today. We have Josiah Hilbig, we have Alice Romaine, we have Lindsay Williams, and we have Andrew Gray, and they're going to be sharing a little bit later too. I'm going to ask some questions of them. I want to encourage you, if you have any questions about student life at MST or Eastern, pop those questions in the chat and we'll be happy to get them to you. Also want to encourage you um, just to let you know that this is being recorded, this session and will be used um, and in fact there'll be a link in the chat if you want to listen to it again afterward but just know that this is being recorded so if you don't prefer to be on camera and recorded go ahead and just keep your video off um, but we're happy to welcome you remember there are links in the chat um, if you want to book an appointment to talk with someone for MST or Eastern about with any questions about um, courses classes all of that, you can go on chat and, and book an appointment with either Daisy or Iona. So welcome. First of all, we're going to listen and hear from two alumni of this colleges, of the colleges. We have Diane Naidu from uh, a graduate of MST and in a, with a Bachelor of Ministry. And we have Tom Papella, who is a, an Eastern grad. He did his Bachelor of Education primary and is currently teaching at Chelsea um, Primary School. So Diane, let's hear from you first. Talk about life at MST and what that was like for you. But go ahead and unmute yourself so we can hear you, please. Yep, there we go. Can you hear me now? Um, so life for me at MST was absolutely amazing it wasn't like anything i expected it to be um i walked in through those doors uh, to just um inquire about what study would look like uh for me at mst and i was greeted with such friendly faces um it already started feeling like a, a place that i could be comfortable in uh what struck me the most was this journey god had already started um uh, walking alongside with me, prompting me to study, and it led to me investigating MST. Um, I was greeted, like I said, with by warm, friendly faces. I was given a tour immediately of the the building, and I and I started having the sense of feeling that yep, this is where God wanted me to be. And what cemented that deal for me was um, taking the information pack home from Iona. And when I went home to, to open up this pack to just have a look-see, because I was a little apprehensive of what, um, you know, the fee structure and that would be. Um, and this verse that God had given to me a few months prior was Philippians 4.19. And this is what stared back at me. And I immediately called up Iona and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm going to be a, a part of MST. And I enrolled and I have not regretted it. Uh, the sense of community at MST is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, and like I say, I went there feeling very overwhelmed, feeling very uh, scared, apprehensive, because it's been a while since I'd studied and also being an older student, but it was just absolutely unbelievable. I would encourage anybody that is, is feeling a sense of, of God prompting you uh, to, um, to investigate, to, to check it out, do it because it's not anything that you would regret at all. Mm. Diane, talk to us a um, little about your lecturers. My lecturers, you know, this may sound almost like, uh, like cliche or somebody maybe, you know, you may even think that uh, I was scripted to say this, but there isn't, 
anything that I could fault in regards with my experience at MST. Uh, if I had anxieties, it came from me. The lectures that I had from start to finish of my course impacted in my life uh, to such an extent was, was absolutely mind-blowing. Um, the journey that I traveled in that four years was not an easy one, but each one of those lecturers had something pertinent, something important, even sometimes it was absolutely personal through their uh, academic knowledge that they imparted to us. There was also this, this heart that came with it. So you actually felt God speak through these lecturers to us um, as, as students on the receiving end. It, 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 did, it wasn't like study. It, it just wasn't. It was learning about this amazing God from these, these lecturers that were so, to me, it was like so in step with me on my journey learning about God. Mm. So you feel like your lecturers knew you? Absolutely. A and they did. They did. They absolutely did. It was amazing. You know, you'd hear uh, a little bit of feedback or in conversation. Uh, it, was, it was not a learning environment. It was not like any, I've been to so many other institutions where I've learned, but MST was, was just a, a different place. Um, the lecturers were passionate about um, about the, the subject material that they were delivering. And, and it was like, they were just handpicked for that. And, and through that, I gained uh, heaps of knowledge and just a deeper sense of love uh, for scripture and God. Well, that leads me to a question, Diane. How, um, talk a little bit about your, your spiritual transformation during those years you were at MST. What did you see in your spiritual life? Um, I come from a Hindu background and it was only in 2008 that I, um, that I baptized and taken on, um, Jesus as my Lord and savior. So I was really hungry, passionate to want to learn, uh, more. And I was always feeling a little, you know, um, that I lacked knowledge, awareness. I wanted to have a deeper understanding of the Bible of God and, and how he spoke to me through scripture. So in coming to MST, um, I found that that transformation happen in a sense that I was learning to interpret this word in the way it should be interpreted. And it, it also did a lot of unlearning uh, for the years um, that I was uh, open and exposed to scripture. There were, there were lots of things that, that now made sense there were a lot of things that I understood with clarity. I learned how to interpret scripture in its proper context first, and then see how that applied to my situation, if it did. Not to just, you know, I remember, I'm not gonna say, I think it was a few of my lecturers that said, don't take scripture and just slap it willy-nilly to any and every situation. Always understand the context. So I think that, in, in doing that, that was the transformation in me that, that I, 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 not that I'm perfect at it, or I know to do it well all the time, but I have this awareness that when I'm looking at scripture, what did it mean for the people in that context then, and how is that applying to me? And through that, I've, I've, I've seen a change in me that that's made me stronger in the way I use God's word to, to apply to my life and that of my family and to see those changes um, happening. Okay, so I'm going to use this question because you, you self-identified as an older student. So I wasn't going to say that, but you, you said it first. <laughs> Diane, how yes. was it as an older student when you were at college with some students who almost could have been like your children's age. How was that for you? Uh, the first year I did, my first subject was Old Testament. 
And I remember walking into the lecture room and wondering, do I sit in the front or do I go hide at the back? And I thought by the time I got into this class, there was this, all these young faces just staring back at me. And I thought, how am I going to do this? And they were also, you know, so vibrant and lively and the rest of it. So I decided, okay, I'm going to bite the bullet and sit right at the front. So I took the front row and lo and behold, there were just a few other older students in my shoes that, that ended up being next to me. So we developed this great friendship, but also it was amazing how that, as you say, you know, seeing myself as a mom uh, and interacting with, with the, the other students that were, could have been my kids, it made it that much more easier. I developed some amazing relationships. And what helped me settle even more was seeing this group of young people that were so on fire for God. Each and every lecture, they were so excited and, and so ready to learn and take in. Uh, that, that, that was um, the settler for me. I, I, I felt immediately comfortable. And I think as I opened up and embraced them, they did the same with me as well. Mm. I know that they did the same with you as well. In fact, fun fact, so Daisy Barnard, who is the inquiries person for on the Eastern side, actually she and Diane served on student leadership at the same time. So a lot of friendships that you made and formed during those years, right, Diane? Yes, Daisy's an absolute bomb. I mean, she's just an amazing, amazing young woman. And I had the privilege of studying with her from my very first year in that very Old Testament class. Oh. So it was, it was really a privilege uh, journeying with her. Thank you, Diane. Well, thanks, Diane. And now I'm gonna, going to ask, ask Tom Pipella. Remember, Tom is an Eastern College Australia grad who's currently teaching uh, year five and six at Chelsea Primary. I'm going to ask Tom to talk about his, um, his experience at, at Eastern. And Tom, I may have some questions for you as well, but why don't you go ahead and take it away and talk about your experience at Eastern. Thank you. Um, well, Oh, when I, whenever I think about um, my experience at Easton, um, I just have these great memories of um, sitting in really good sized classes. So I think there'd be about 10 to 15 per class. And I just loved that it was in this intimate sort of really um, calm and like everyone knew each other it sort of environment. And the lectures were just really great. The way that they um, conducted the lessons and the way that they taught us, I just thought it was um, whenever, whenever I think about it, that experience of Eastern, it was just such a great and enriching um, experience when it comes to education. So uh, whenever, we're, whenever you think about, um, you know, universities, you think these big, these big um, halls with, you know, 100 to 150 students and everyone's, no one knows each other, but it was the complete opposite with Eastern. It was just a really um, great um, experience. And because they um, created that environment so well, it was, yeah, really easy to learn what they were, what they were bringing up. Um, I just, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I was at Easton at two different campuses, and then when we joined MST, um, it was just such a great experience to be a part with, um, to be a part of it, MST as well. So I did some one-on-one uh, -on -one lecture lectures with some really great lecturers, and that's something I'm always grateful for because um, when I think about the knowledge I've gained over my um, education experience at Easton. Uh, you know, I really got to tap into the knowledge from other lecturers um, and I got to get their immediate feedback. And that's something that's really built me up with uh, when I was studying. Um, and also something I wanted to talk about um, with Easton was the fact that their placements were so well structured. So this is, if you're studying education, um, you have to do a round of placements. So I did, I did three rounds of placements. We had a five, six placement, a grade three placement, and then a prep and one placement, um, which was a very unique ex experience with the preps. But um, I, every single mentor teacher that I had um, would compliment how well structured those placements were. Um, and just the professionalism that I experienced with t reflecting on my teaching practice and, you know, videoing myself and, and seeing how I was teaching. These are, you know, really high impact strategies that actually are used in the real world today. So when I, started to go for jobs um, 
it's I was already built up in that professionalism and um I, yeah this is such a great it was it's built up so good and the way that they've introduced like these modern day teachings um strategies at Easton's just it's really um brought me as a brought you know built me as a um, teacher today um, and in when I think about like that faith um, aspect so before I started or before I enrolled at Easton um, I was a youth worker and then I was a Sunday school kids you know volunteer um, so I had that background in faith where I really wanted to work with um, children and um, I really had it on my heart to be a teacher one day and I, I just looked at I looked at a few different universities and um, yeah, Eastern College, uh, it was called Tabor at the time, um, obviously. So I've gone through a few transitions with Eastern, but um, it just struck me that, that we're on the same level when it comes to what we believe, um, how God sees children and how God sees us. And it was such a great, um, again, experience for me with how lecturers integrated our belief with the way that they taught us. Um, especially in my final year, I found it very difficult. Um, there was a few things that happened in my life. And uh, I remember sitting down last year and thinking, you know, how am I going to get to the next stage? How am I going to become a teacher? It was it almost felt like too much. And just the way that the lecturers got behind me and, and supported me um, with that faith and prayed with me, it was, it was, I think, you know, a real key factor. And, you know, me being a confident graduate um, and then, you know, come this year, um, I think, you know, middle of last, middle of last year, I thought, wow, it's such, you know, I'm, I'm very overwhelmed and I asked for that support and the lectures are just so great. And now this year, it's like, you know, I started this year working at Bayside Christian College um, and Flinders Christian College as a relief teacher. And then I um, applied for a job at Chelsea Primary um, and for a six month, six month contract um, in the middle of the year. And then obviously oh, I, on Friday, I was extended for another year. So they really built me up in um, who I am as a teacher. And, you know, when I first joined, I really didn't really have a great idea of what to expect. And now um, as I'm working, I've got this great foundation of professionalism. And I've also got this great foundation of who I am as a teacher in the eyes of God. Um, and, you know, what the purpose of me doing this. So I wake up every morning reminding myself that I'm here to um, make these, this, you know, the kids' lives better every single day. Um, and just to really follow, uh, you know, believe in that and just keep on that path. Tom, that's fantastic. And I love what you're saying that there's an integration of your faith and then your professional life. So talk a little bit about how it is for you to having gone through your education at Eastern to walk into the classroom as a professional, but also as a Christian. How has that informed you? But yeah, so it's a bit of, a, it's almost like a tale of two cities for me because I first started off my, um, I guess, professional career at, um, at Bayside and Bayside Christian College and at Flinders Christian College and I had quite a bit of teaching experience there um, as a professional. And it was really great. So like with Eastern, obviously they, they have that focus of a biblical perspective in their education. So um, when I walked in, I, it naturally, um, I suited those schools very well um, as I was teaching them and I was able to freely you know, sit with the kids and pray with them and, and, you know, talk about God and that. And so it naturally worked really well. And again, with that, like, again, with just the way that Eastern structured their um, placement. So I had that really strong foundation of knowing what to do when I got into the classroom. Um, and then I, I said, so Chelsea Primary is a state school. Um, so Chelsea Primary, it's a very different story. Um, I, I sort of see it as how I, how do I integrate my faith in a, you know, non-Christian school and a state school. Um, you know, I just do it. I just do it by action. So I always. Uh, so well-being and mental health is a big perspective in our um, in our senior team, especially with. So they're all eleven and twelve-year-olds currently going through the situation, and I came into the school during the situation. So I think I bring a lot to the table when it comes to just um, focusing on their health and well-being and making sure that they do feel loved and valued and, and taking those. Um, core Christian beliefs that we believe in and incorporating them um, into my teaching practice. But obviously without <laughs> asking kids to pray, otherwise, you know, it's a, it's a different story than it is to, um, you know, a Christian school. Exactly. And it sounds like you feel well-equipped to be in that space 
to to be a Christian in a, in a what we would consider a secular working environment. The other thing you mentioned that caught my attention, Tom, was class size, the small classes at Eastern. So talk a little bit about your lecturers. Did you feel like you were known? Did you feel like you were a person that there was personal relationship? Yeah, so when I, um, when I actually got to, do, to show you how, I guess, close I was to my lecturers, when I got the job at Chelsea, I emailed a few of my lecturers and they emailed me back saying congratulations. So I think, yeah, we knew each other so well. And um, there are a few lecturers that I can, I think I'll never forget for the rest of my life, just because, um, especially in my final year, uh, when I was teaching, I had practice, uh, sorry, a practicum placement with preps and it was a real battle uh, for me. And just the fact that they would come in and just support me um, and give me tips. And they, they didn't just think, oh, well, let's see if he, let's see if he sinks or swims. They really got behind behind me um, and then when it comes to that class size um, I think a lot of my so I graduated in January um, for the 2019 graduates and I think a lot of us most of us are working full-time at the school at the moment um, and when we were graduating it was just this great feeling of like a bunch of friends that studied together and that been through all this you know education experience together the difficulties of um, you know uh, teaching in a practice, practice in, sorry, practice in placement um, and handing in assignments. And yeah, there was that real bond that when we graduated, it was like that, that you probably wouldn't feel in a, in a larger um, university. And I have actually studied in a larger university before. Um, and yeah, it was this real, like I, I would call it a warm feeling when you come into the classroom because you sit down and you'd see your friends come in and you know, you'd, you know each other really well so you're just like how's your kids going or you know talk about your football teams and the lecturer comes in and everyone's very jovial and it's a really good experience I, I keep I keep on remembering like just some really great moments of when lecturers would join in with students and we'd have a great lesson so oh that's fantastic yeah. so you sound like a satisfied customer yeah absolutely I, I'm um, really glad that I chose Easton um, and then I wish, I wish, um, I almost wanted to like stay back a few years because I, I love the MST, the, the setup they've got now with Eastern and, and MST. Um, so when I graduated, I only had one year with Eastern and, and MST in the same building, but that was, that's a really awesome setup. And um, it was a really, I had a really great final year with, you know, those two um, different schools, I, I guess, if you say. Well, that's fantastic. And let me just remind you that you could always do a master's. <laughs> There's That's always right. an after. Right. And that leads me right. Thanks, Tom. That's Thank been you. so helpful. Thank you so much. And stick around because we may have some more questions for you. But that leads me into something else. So we have a student, we've we've heard from a couple of bachelor students or alumni. We have a guest actually with us today. Um, Eric, please go ahead and unmute yourself because I'm going to put you on the spot. We have a, a, a student who's doing his doctorate from the US with MST. Eric, talk about what led you to MST. Why did you choose MST? Yeah, uh, thanks Sue. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for uh, letting me jump in today. Um, I started a year ago and there weren't any virtual meet and greets a year ago, so I decided to join this one this year since there was one. Um, my, my, uh, I'll have to be brief in my story because um, it was really a windy road to get to MST. <clears throat> But uh, it really clearly God's hand was was on it. Um, so my wife and I and our three kids, we were missionaries in Ukraine. Um, and in 2015, I started applying to PhD programs. Um, and I was mostly applying to places in the States because we were going to move back from Ukraine to the U.S. And the idea was I would move, we'd move straight to wherever I was going to work on my PhD. Uh, we did apply to one uh, U.K. school. Um, I didn't get in anywhere uh, that first year. And when, when you're pursuing a PhD in theology or philosophy, that's, that can be common. Um, so we decided to, the, the, the struggles of doing that from a distance, trying to apply to PhD programs from a distance, uh, kind of convinced us to move home. So 2016, we moved back. Um, and then I applied for the next year um, to another round of uh, philosophy and theology PhD programs. Um, and right toward the tail end of that, when all of the applications were in, that's when um, 
uh, let me get this right. So it's um, Sue's husband, Tom. It's Tom's aunt, right? Kathy Little is Tom's aunt, right? Yes. Okay. So so um, so Sue's aunt is a is a longtime member, founding member of our church. Although she was very young when the church started, sixty plus years ago. Um, really close friends of ours, and said, you know what? You should look up uh, Melbourne School of Theology because Tom and Sue are there. I think it's a great place and. At the time, I was kind of on kind of that, like, uh, I, was, I was hitting depression because I was getting a bunch of rejection letters the second time around. Um, I didn't really have it in me to apply to another program. And I, after the two years of trying to get into places, um, I, it, I was just kind of, okay, I need to, I'm, I'm not getting into a PhD program, so I got to get a job. I got to provide for my family. Um, so I put everything on the back, all PhD uh, research on, on the back burner, um, and then started working at, um, at Talbot uh, School of Theology, which is at Biola University, which that's where I went to school and got my degrees. And um, when we were in Ukraine, I worked for the ext an extension of Talbot um, in Ukraine. And sometime like, I don't know, short, after kind of all the dust had settled, I wasn't in. I wasn't in a PhD program. I wasn't looking to get into a PhD program. Um, I, I I can't remember if it was if it was Kathy or if it was Tom, um, but somebody we we made a connection and Tom was going to be in town, and um, and he said, you know, why don't we why don't we get together? And I said, yeah, let's get together. I think I'm ready to have a conversation about this again. And um, in the course of a year, I think we ended up meeting twice and just really connected well. And I got to kind of understand what um, uh, um, MST is all about and kind of the ethos. And um, Tom, knowing what I wanted to study, knew that there was a faculty member at MST that would be a great fit for me. Um, the dialogue started happening. And so last year then, um, I, I, uh, I started in, in, in PhD program. And the thing that really resonated with me is that um, from my very first email, um, I had a level of kind of um, connection with everybody in the process, whether that was Tom um, or whether that was uh, Catherine um, and, and, uh, and or uh, Michael Brodingham, who is my now my supervisor any of those interactions, I felt like these people know me and they want me in the program. They want me to succeed, which uh, of the of the 15, approximately 15 schools I had applied to up until that point, there was only one school that matched that kind of connectivity with really kind of encouraging and, and wanting to um, to get to know me and, and, and kind of where I felt like they were on my side working for my success. And, and then um, obviously, MST takes the cake because uh, they because I got in, <laughs> and uh, and everybody celebrated when I got in. And so, it, again, long and winding road, but it really proved it proved uh, best for our for our family to settle here in Southern California where we are, um, and to me to do a, a distance PhD. It really would have been hard with all of the cross cultural like, like the reentry coming back from the mission field with with kids at that point they were all under 10 years old um, that would have been really hard to come back from Ukraine move to someplace in the US that we had no friends no contacts you know didn't know anything and then that would be our cultural readaptation it was just so helpful to be in a place that we knew where we had family and friends and everything so God just really orchestrated um, my uh, my kind of um, finding and 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 joining uh, MST. I'm grateful for it. Oh, Eric, thank you so much. And so a year later, we say meet and greet you. And yeah. happy, <laughs> happy to have you on board. And it's interesting, the theme of students who are known. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that. So thank you, Eric, for joining us today. And thank you for, for that, that, that MST and Eastern really are schools where our students are known. Yeah. So um, just a reminder for those of you who have joined us, if there are any questions, feel free to put those in chat. Um, I'll be happy to ask so that we can hear from some of our student leaders, um, our alumni, 
so feel free to ask any questions in chat. But let's go ahead and, and transition now. We thank Eric and we thank Diane and we thank Tom. Um, but let's go ahead and transition now to some questions. So Josiah, I'll start with you. No, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to start with Alice. Alice is an international student from the Netherlands. Alice, talk a little bit about how it's been coming to Australia, coming to MST. How have you found the community at MST? The community at MST is just great. Um, the, the alumni earlier said it. Um, there's so much of being known. Like all my lectures know me. Um, and they don't just know me, they actually care about me. Mm -hmm. So you can have a pastoral conversation with anyone there. Um, I think that's great for me is that I'm not the only international student. I'm not the only international person there. We've got a lot of international lecturers. Um, so in times like recently, COVID is quite a trigger for homesickness for a lot of international people. Uh, but I've been able to actually just mention that to my lecturers and they know what I'm talking about and that's just a really cool thing um, to and I have a similar thing with students but you see them less but we still have a lot of online classes that are video calls um, which is still great so we still have a sense of community um, we as student leadership also try to cultivate community so we've got some online spaces in which we try to do that um, but when it's life is back to normal and we are at uni we often hang out we often have some board games after class and we have chapel and there's just a lot of community there's a lot of love around and it feels like a warm bath thanks alice that's fantastic um so let's hear josiah now I'll go i'll toss it to you and you talk about community please and see and what your experience has been um, before I came to MST, I tried studying theology at another college and uh, I found that I could uh, go to my classes, sit through a lecture and leave without basically talking to anyone. Um, and there weren't even really avenues for me to do that. You know, there were no like social gatherings or you no know, student lounge where people would congregate. Um, and that was the biggest difference I noticed at MST going from that other college to MST was the fact that, um, you know, after every class, there are people sitting in the lounge on the couches, having lunch together, talking about the Bible together, um, you know, debating theology together, um, you know, and, the, and there was a board, this, you know, set up of board games and at a table tennis table and, and we had chapel and, and that was something that I didn't have at this other college either. Um, all these little ways that just form a community that, you know, this other college didn't even have, like there was no sense of community at all. Um, and that's something that I value, you know, just as much as the education is actually enjoying it. And, you know, if I'm going to be here for years, I want to, you know, I want to make friends. I want to, you know, have relationships. I want to, you know, enjoy my time while I'm there. You know, I'm not just there to study. I'm there to, you know, engage with people and, and make friends and- um, Okay, yeah, but yeah, just, I have, just I have a question. Is yeah. that all you people talk about at MST, the Bible and theology? Is that all you uh, do? No, actually. Um, that, no, actually. That we have um, a lot of other things that we talk about as well because, you know, we have, have things in common. And, mm. um, you know, Andrew Gray and I both um, share interests in, in, in role-playing games and video games. And so we get to talk about those while we're at college together. Okay, I just want to make that make sure that we all understand that it's not all Bible talk and theology talk. <laughs> Thanks. So um, you mentioned Andrew Gray, so I'm going to hand it to Andrew. Andrew, talk a little bit about your experience. This was your first year at mm. MST, yeah. and kind of an interesting year it's been. Talk about your experience, um, what it's been like for you as a new student in more of a virtual situation yeah it's definitely been weird it, it's not uh it, it's not something that i wanted to do studying online i i personally find it very difficult and, and i still find it difficult um but i i think that we're we're quite lucky to have so many of our classes actually already offered online uh so my 
my unit uh, that I'm doing this semester is is the Old Testament unit. And uh, last year I did the Old Testament unit, not last year, sorry, last semester, I did the, the other Old Testament unit. Both of them already had developed online modules. So it was actually a, a, quite a relatively easy transition in terms of uh, the, the academic side of things. Uh, so that's, that's, been, that's been quite good. One thing that we've tried to do as a, as a leadership team is to try and continue to foster community, even though we can't actually meet in person. And so we've set up a, a Discord server to allow our, our students to interact and connect with each other outside of classes. Uh, and so that's something that we started last semester and we were sort of, you know, caught off guard, I guess, by everything. But we've been able to come into it a lot more proactively this semester as well. So we've had nights where we've just gotten online and whoever's whoever's logged in, we've just chatted together and hung out. We've had nights where we play games together. We, we've had nights on, on Thursday, in fact, we had a, a worship and prayer night, which was really, it was a good time. So yeah, we've actually still been able to do all that stuff, which is really cool. That was one of the things I was looking forward to the most actually about going back into study was being able to have community and to be able to continue it still has been really encouraging. Yeah. So you feel like even with the um, kind of the challenges that we faced during this year, you feel a part of the community. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's great. So glad to hear that. Thanks, Andrew. Lindsay, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, talk about spiritual life at MST and Eastern. What does it look like? Um, how has your education um, impacted your spiritual life? Um, it's a good question. Um, I think for me, I came to MST a couple of years ago for that very purpose. I um, didn't really have aspirations of, of going into uh, pastoral ministry or um, all kind of cross-cultural missions. I kind of came because I was hungry to learn um, more about, about what I was hearing on a Sunday at church. Um, and growing up in the Christian Christian culture, I was, was very familiar with it. But um, just kind of watching all these friends of mine who were, were going, to, going to Bible college, and most likely the majority of them were at MST, um, and just was seeing a little spark in them that I didn't have in myself. Um, so new new Tom and Sue um, outside of outside of study, um, and, and decided to sign up and, and come along. And I've just felt that the journey has been almost more about about me and my journey in faith with God than the marks that I receive on a at an end of end of the semester on on the units and assignments I do. And and I can I can tell you that I mean. I'm no, no, definitely not the person I was three years ago when I started my degree. My, my faith is deeper. My understanding of, of scripture is, is greater. Um, my hunger to learn more is even, even greater than it was when I began. Um, I think that journey at MST, as, as everyone said, you know, that community is, is that they, they, the lecturers let you know who they are. They show you the journey they've been on and it actually makes you hungry to journey the same kind of journey and get to that place of, well, you know, it's kind of that thing of going, I want to grow up to be like them. You know, it's, they, they actually, are, they tell you their hard times, they tell you their good times and they go, well, actually, it's not just a teacher standing at the front of the room. It's actually, this is my friend who I've got to know them. They've shared their journey. You share yours and you kind of journey that spiritual journey together. And you, and yeah, I'm just going, I could, I just, it's been such a joy to, to learn at MST and, and I, I finished my degree now, I'm almost at the end um, and I'm going to hang around for the next couple of years just auditing whatever comes comes on the plate because it's just, yeah, it's just a blessing to be part of a community that feels like family. Well, we're glad you're going to hang around and audit some more classes, um, Lindsay. Now, I like what you said that not only are you known by your lecturers, but you know them. That's an interesting way of looking at it too. How did you, you said that you experienced that by lecturers who would share from their personal experience. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, I'd definitely say that. I think also the, um, when they stand up at a lec at like at the front of the room in a class, you know, they'll tell you, they'll tell you how their week's been or, you know, 
they'll make a comment about why they were, you know, five minutes late to class or, or like even when we went into this COVID time, you know, and suddenly what classes we were doing on, on campus suddenly go and like the first email I get isn't, you know, telling me how we're going to do it. It's from my lecturers asking me how I'm going and also telling me, oh yeah, they're finding it hard too to try and adjust. So it's, it's a place where they're, they're quite real. Um, and, and it's not, and they have that relationship with you outside of the classroom as well. And even after you finish a particular unit you might have them for, you, you walk down the hallway and they'll kind of ask you about something that they, you told them about three, three months ago and they're just checking up on how it's, how it's going. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a community that goes beyond the classroom. That's fantastic. And I think part of that goes back to what Tom was saying about the smaller class size. When you're in a classroom with, you know, 10, 15 other people, your lecturers can know you and it's easier for them to let them know, let you know them. So thanks, Lindsay. That's really helpful. Um, have a question. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask Daisy for you to be ready on board to answer this one. Um, First of all, this person says, thank you all for sharing, but I'm a little confused about the relationship between MST and Eastern. Great question. Going to hand it to Daisy for an answer on that one. Sure. Thanks, Sue. Very good question and one that I actually really enjoy answering as well. So uh, Melbourne School of Theology and Eastern College Australia, our whole thing is really two colleges but one community. So we are two separate colleges in the sense that Melbourne School of Theology is a part of the Australian College of Theology and Eastern Colleges uh, has its own accrediting bodies. Um, so in terms of courses and uh, accredited uh, education, there's different governing bodies there. Uh, but in terms of community, we are very much one. So as you can see, this student leadership team here, um, and they've talked about different student events that they put on, as well as college events, things like our weekly chapel services, which at the moment we've still been doing online, a community connect where we all come together once a week, which has been really, really great. So those that community, um, but also you'll find that there's a number of faculty and staff that may work across uh, both of the colleges as well. So uh, especially, um, so you might find if you're studying at Eastern and doing your Christian Foundation units, uh, you may have a faculty member who also teaches some Bible and theology units at MST as well. Uh, and there's also a really cool opportunity um, for some students to do cross institutional units um, if you're wanting to do a little bit of study at both colleges. Um, but then in terms of campus as well, obviously we're one community in the sense that we're in one building. So we're sharing our student common area, we're sharing the classrooms, we're sharing the library and the facilities. Um, so we're one in terms of being together, but also one in our community and the vision that really is to train and equip Christians for, for life and ministry. So I hope that helps answer the question. <laughs> Thanks, Daisy. That's really helpful. Thank you. Okay, so now I want to talk some nuts and bolts. Um, and I'm going to open this up to anybody who wants to answer. In fact, we'll start. Let's go ahead and do uh, Diane and Tom. Why don't you answer these two, actually? And that is, how are the assessments? How hard is it, the academics at MST and Eastern? Diane, let's start with you. Then we'll go with Tom. Unmute, unmute, there we go. Uh, assessments were oh so daunting. I was flabbergasted. Will I get to doing this and how do I upload and how do I send and bibliography? Oh my goodness. But you know, like everyone has shared, we have such a supportive community, both within our peers and with our lecturers that really made it a piece of cake for me. Um, uh, the first assessment, I had my daughter sitting next to me, uh, running me through with it. And she said, Mom, I can do this for just so long and you're going to have to learn this on your own. And I thought, I can't do that. So I went to school and decided I'm going to share my fears that this is what's happening for me. And yeah, at, at whatever point there was somebody, either a, a, a fellow student or one of the lecturers that was just happy to to run me through and also with the material the 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 
addressing what was required from us from these assessments uh, you weren't left you know like to figure it out on your own or to know that this is what we delivered in class so get on with it there was still that support there was you know that you could email at any time to a lecturer and say this is where i'm at i'm not getting it i'm not understanding an open door policy at mst is something that that is yeah that goes above and beyond where you could you know Go to a lecturer and say i'm stuck and i meet with you sit with you and and that that's what helped me and it helped overcome my fear so now yeah i'll do an assignment fantastic thanks diane tom how was it on the eastern side um in terms of that assessment like difficulty i think um it, it differs for everyone for so for my first year i remember thinking um, coming from a photography background, we didn't do much writing. So I think the first assignment was about 800 to 1,000 words. And I thought, well, how am I going to do this? And then, and then by my fourth year, you know, if I was given an 800 to 1,000 word assignment with a broad perspective, I thought, oh, you beaut, you know, this is going to be, this is an easy one. So, but uh, yeah, so in terms of um, assessment, um, I think it was pretty good. Like it's it, by my fourth year, you know, I, I was so strong in writing and understanding what an essay question is asking you to do and understanding how to answer and sorry, how to do research and academic research at that. But um, I think I'll comment on the level of assessment. It was very high, the level of assessment. So um, I found that um, now that I'm teaching in the, in the real world, I have a really good um, basic foundational knowledge of what I'm doing. Um, so the, the actual assessments, uh, they were hard sometimes, but I think it, it's, they were very high level assessments. So, um, you know, I talked to other teachers and they're just, they're just really stoked that there's a graduate teacher that has a really good understanding of um, what to do, especially when it comes um, for a teacher's perspective. Um, you teach really to assess how well you're teaching and how well the kids are understanding. And um, that's been a real strong point that I believe Eastern College has is that they really emphasize on the real, um, the really important things about education um, as a teacher, when you're a teacher and that's, and that's learning how to um, assess. So that the assessments were, I guess you could say the, the Eastern College assessments and were very high level because, um, and practical. So I'm, I'm still using, I'm still using what I learned. Of course, I'm still using what I learned um, at Eastern College today in my classroom. Excellent. So that practicality yeah. comes through. Fantastic. Great. So I've got another question about um, MST and Eastern. Daisy, do you want to give us some more information about the two colleges, one community? We've got some opportunities in Tassie. Talk a little bit about that, please. Yeah, definitely. So there's a, a question to tie in as well about um, kind of how many students we have. Um, so across a both the colleges, I believe there's about 600 students. So you might not find on campus that there's hundreds of people around all the time, um, but we have a number of courses and campuses that are around Australia, but also overseas. Uh, so we have people, uh, like we heard earlier, that are studying by distance overseas. We have, uh, Eastern has a course called a Master of Transformational Development, uh, which is held as a number of different intensives in different countries across the world for people working in um, mission and NGOs. Uh, and we also have, uh, uh, each college kind of has a number of different partnerships as well. So at Easton, uh, we are a partner with Youth Dimension. So there's a number of kids in schools who are doing certificates in Christian ministry and theology and other um, vocational studies uh, through YD, as well as in higher ed, um, the Summer Institute of Linguistics, SIL, you might know them as, are doing uh, courses in um, Bible translation and preparing for that. And then at MST uh, with a campus down in Tasmania, Worldview, uh, which is also a really big focus on mission training as well. So while there might not be heaps and heaps of people at our campus uh, here in Melbourne, uh, it's really exciting to know that we actually are a part of a community, seems to be the word of the day, uh, that is really so much bigger um, than ourselves and what we see just coming to our own individual classes as well. Okay, thank you, Daisy. Um, I am loving hearing all of these answers and I love hearing the enthusiasm 
that you all have for MST and Eastern. Okay, we've got time for one more question. I'm gonna ask this of the four student leaders. We'll start with Josiah, then we'll go to Alice, then we'll go to Andrew, then we'll go to Lindsay. And the question is, why should someone study at MST and Eastern? Josiah, go for it. I think there's a lot of reasons. Um, you know, you don't have to be looking to work in ministry or, or in, you know, mission work. Um, I think the biggest thing, though, the biggest reason why someone should study is if that's their calling, right? If if God is calling them to, to study uh, with Emma Sirius and um, for whatever reason, I, you know, I think that's something to, to pray about, consider, ask other people, you know, spiritual leaders for guidance. Um, and yeah, just, just follow the calling of God on your life. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Alice, MST and Eastern, why? Well, I don't want to, I don't want to use this buzzword of the day all the time, but I'll say study at MST and Eastern if you're keen to learn and keen to learn with great people. Uh, I like that. And you know what, that community buzzword, if you're going to have a buzzword, that's a good one to have. So thank you, Alice. Andrew? MST and Eastern, why should we be studying there? I, uh, I never realized this, but the thing that has, uh, I've had my eyes open to is that you can connect to God through, through academic study and through the intellectual pursuit of the Bible. Uh, that was like, I, I, I'm studying at MST because I felt a calling but I never realized that I could also actually connect to God through the study. Uh, and so that, that I think that's why you should. Sounds like it's more than an academic pursuit. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And Lindsay, you've had some time to think about it. Why MST and Eastern? Um, I think that, yeah, so I had, um, I had the opportunity at one point to be studying at two different universities at the same time, MST and, and another Melbourne university. And I think that MST and Eastern have something that's unique and it's not just, yeah, we talked about it's community. Yes. It's, it's the, the, what you're learning, but um, I actually would say that the experience of walking onto two different campuses, I used to say to people, you know, it's, you just can't just describe it in words. The, the feeling of walking onto a campus where, <clears throat> sorry, you're prayed for by the, by the by the board and there's a pray a great group praying for you every day as students they don't know your name but they're but they're covering you in prayer as you as you walk on campus as you study like it's just this it's so much more than study i think that's why i'd say is you know this is it's if you're going to study something this is probably the most important thing in your whole life that you can study but it's yeah it's providing you with it's with studying with brothers and sisters you know it's not it's not strangers it's it's family Thank you. I want to thank all of you who've joined today. Thank you for those who've been on hand to share from their experience. Um, and also thank you who've joined as you're considering education at either MST or Eastern. I want to encourage you that Open Week is so important. Have every question answered. There are links in the chat to talk with a person ab about the courses of study. Um, don't leave a question unanswered. Be in touch with, with Iona on the MST side or Daisy on the Eastern side. Have all your questions answered. Um, hope you found this week of virtual open week to be beneficial and helpful for you. And we pray that God will richly bless as he leads you into your future, either at MST or Eastern. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.